Lately, more and more 2D applications are implementing 3D features, which makes 3D illustration accessible to a wider audience. 3D tools that were only available to a small group of 3D artists are now front and center for every designer to use. You want to give your logo a 3D look or just give it an extra layer of shine? No problem. With a couple of clicks, you can convert your logo to 3D, and in just a few seconds, you can have a render right inside your favorite 2D application. Adobe's Illustrator was first. The new, more advanced 3D capabilities were launched just a year ago, and now it's Figma's turn. Through a plugin that just runs in the browser, we can output great looking ray traced renders. It's really fascinating to see. But how do these solutions compare against each other? And what kind of results can we expect out of these simple 3D solutions? Let's find out. It's worth mentioning that these tools are not meant to replace dedicated 3D apps. We won't be able to create huge 3D worlds or complex 3D models inside Illustrator or Figma anytime soon. These tools are there to help with simple tasks a designer might need, creating a 3D logo or applying a design on some packaging, that sort of thing. And for the most part, these tasks can be done relatively well. Illustrator has the more advanced 3D tools, and of course, it makes sense. It has to cater to a bigger and more varied audience. Figma, on the other hand, has a more UI-centric audience, so the 3D feature set can be reduced to the needs of that user base. It's also worth mentioning that Figma's 3D capabilities are not native. This functionality is handled through third-party plugins. The one we're going to check today is called vector to 3 d All we have to do to run it is to go to the resource menu item and search for vector to 3 d We hit run, and that's it. The software pops up, and we're ready to go. The software is really easy to use, and it will only take a couple of minutes to figure out the whole thing. It's that simple. Let's use the icons that came as a demo with a plugin, and let's start with the poor Twitter logo. Rest in peace. So to start the rendering, we just have to select the vector group and click on the convert from selected command. And in a matter of seconds, we will have our 3D logo. Once we're satisfied with the result, we click on insert, and our rendered image of our logo is inserted into the workspace. It's that easy. We have several options to change the look of the logo. The one we used here is Inflate, and we have two options for Inflate. This one will stack them independently, as if they're separate objects, and the Clip command will make the two objects interact with each other. The Extrude command gives us a simpler but also equally pleasing look. The Clip command is more plain looking, but the Stack command gives us a more interesting look with a bird casting shadows on the rectangular background. Of course, we can change the direction of the lighting, and we can also change the look of the render. We can make the logo less or more shiny, and we can also adjust how heavy the shadows will be. The developer of the plugin has created some really good defaults, so it's super easy and fast to get something good out of the app. The Pro version is extremely affordable, it's just 15 euros and it can be purchased through Gumroad, so if you like what you see, I would highly encourage you to support the developer. As far as I understand, the plugin is built from just one person, which is extremely impressive. The plugin has some limitations though. For example, we cannot render everything drawn in Figma. Gradients or transparencies cannot be translated to 3D. But as far as I'm aware, the developer is working on adding support for gradients. Other things, like designs using strokes, can be easily converted to make them work with a plugin. All we have to do is outline the stroke, and then everything will work as expected. The one thing that I feel limits the plugin somewhat is the fact that we have to work with a locked camera. We can only see things from a top or front view, depending on how you position yourself in 3D. So we cannot rotate the camera to get a more varied look. This is something I would love to see in a future update. I've also stumbled on a small bug. When I tried to convert my logo to 3D, I had problems with one of the extrusion options. The stack option, for some reason, made these shapes overlap no matter how many adjustments I made. 
This logo though works best with Inflate, and here we have the same issue. The clip option works absolutely amazing, and I can get exactly the look I'm after. But the stack option has these shapes overlapping. Despite those issues though, it's amazing how easy it is to get these great looking 3D renders in a matter of seconds. If we wanted to create this 3D logo the regular way, it would have taken a lot more than just 10 or 15 seconds. We would have to export the vectors, import them into cinema, create the 3D model, light it, render it, and finally import it back to Figma. This is a process that takes way more time than through Figma's plugin. So if you're a UI designer who just wants to create some cool looking icons or designs, I cannot recommend this plugin enough. Of course, it's good to have the knowledge of how 3D applications work, but honestly, for these sort of things, I don't see why you would want to spend the time to learn a whole other app. The Vector to 3D plugin is more than enough. Okay, so that's Figma. Let's see now how Illustrator fares. We'll create the same logos as we did with Figma, just to see how they compare. As you can see, we can pretty much get the same results as the Figma plugin. We do have though a few more options. And one of the most important ones have to be the beveling possibilities. We have a lot more profiles to choose from, and each one of them can completely transform the look of the object. And by adjusting the width and the height of the bevel, we can get some nice, subtle detailing. We also have a lot of options when it comes to materials. Apart from adjusting the roughness and the metalness of the existing colors, we can use substance materials to get even more detailed effects. And since these are parametric materials, we can adjust a lot of different parameters to get exactly the look we're after. The other cool thing is the fact that we have the ability to add more than just one light. Unfortunately, the implementation is not that great, but we can still get some nice effects out of them. As you can see, adding one extra light can add all these highlights that bring out these cool little details. My main issue with the light implementation is the fact that we cannot disable shadows per light. They either have to be on or off for all of them, which can easily create distracting shadows around the object. The other issue is the fact that it's easy to create overexposed renders. Which brings us to the render quality. I have the suspicion that Illustrator's ray tracing is more accurate than Figma's plugin, but in Twitter's case, the more stylized look of the vector to 3D plugin feels much better. I'm sure we can get a similar look with Illustrator, but it will take quite a bit of tweaking to get there. And with a Vector to 3D plugin, we don't really have to do much at all. As you will see though in a little bit, Illustrator's more accurate renderer can look better in some cases. Where Illustrator has the bigger advantage over Figma is the ability to rotate the 3D object. We can either choose from presets, or we can adjust by hand. Again, the implementation here is not the best, but we have more options than what's available in the Vector to 3D plugin. The main problem here is the fact that non-grouped objects cannot be rotated in relation to each other. And if we group them, we lose control of per object parameters. So if I wanted the cylinder to have a smaller extrusion and to be on top of the rectangle, there's no real easy way to do that. Now, let's see how my logo looks in Illustrator. I really like the quality of the render here, and if we compare it to Figma's plugin, you will see how much more accurate Illustrator's renderer feels. But I definitely don't mind Vector to 3 ds render results overall. It has a very nice stylized look, and in some cases it can work wonders. It's perfect for stylized logos or abstract graphics. And to be fair, this is going to be how most of Figma's designers will use it. Either way though, both implementations can get the job done when it comes to basic 3D shapes and designs. If you've seen my older video about Illustrator's 3D implementation, my opinion hasn't changed that much since then. The effect still needs a lot more work. The team has added more features since that video, and they have improved a couple of things here and there, but it's still not that great. 
I'm being harsher with Illustrator's implementation because I'm expecting a whole lot more from Illustrator. It should be able to do more than what a 15 euro plugin can do and it should also cater to a lot more scenarios. And currently, it's good for only one or two of them. The ability, for example, to create complex 3D illustrations by outputting vectors is not really possible. We still have to use the 20 year old 3D effect that's still in Illustrator's menu. But for basic effects, both 3D implementations can do a great job. Either way, I absolutely love the fact that we have these tools right inside our 2D applications. It just makes things a whole lot easier. As a 3D artist, of course, I would have liked to see some more features, but for now, the current feature set is good enough. I have the feeling that the third-party plugin vector to 3 d has better chances of implementing these more advanced features. Adobe has the tendency to just update a feature once and then leave it untouched for years, at least until the development team decides to give it a new coat of paint. It's a shame because there's so much potential there, and if the tools could be adjusted even a tiny bit, they would make for far better tools. But yeah. It is what it is. Anyway, I think that's about it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you on the next time.